Hello everyone, it's me, Coffee Stitcher. It is the last Sunday in May, if you can believe that. Um, the, uh, I haven't changed my calendar in here, I didn't mean to. Last Sunday in May. How is everybody? Awesome. Well, we've got our fabulous June goals this week. We've got um, the Whip Go plans. We've got New Moon, New Start, which is tomorrow. Um, we've got we've got a whole lot actually today. Um, only a little haul, but I've had a lot of haul the last little bit, so it's okay to only have a little this time. Um, all right, so let's dive right on in. We'll start with the Q and A. Thank y'all for the Q and A this week. That always makes me happy. Um, so the first question comes from Sarah R. Um, she wanted to ask about needles and she wanted, she says, I remember that you like small ones, but I couldn't remember the make or why it was your preferred, this particular brand. I'm looking for good quality needles. So I like the John James Petites in either a 28 or a 26. Um, and that really depends on the fiber that I need to use. The 26 has a slightly larger eye. So on those crinics that are real bad to excuse my hiccups, um, that are real bad to unravel, um, or if I have to use like a number eight and it's a little thicker, it's a little easier to thread that on a 26. I like the, the John James are the only ones I've found in petites. Um, and the reason I like the petites is it gives you just, I feel like I get a little bit more floss usage out of the petite than I do out of a regular size needle. Um, to the point that exclusively if I get a kit, I automatically replace its needle. But that's just me. Um, but that is why I do them. So the John James Petites, those are my favorite. They do come in gold plated. I honestly don't notice enough difference between the regular and the gold plated to justify the added expense of the gold plated. Um, but again, that's also just me. There are some people who swear by the gold, the gold plating. Um, I, however, do not. Um, Susan Hofton, I will reach out to you because that will be helpful. Um, I meant to do that earlier this week and then life just sort of got in the way. Robin B. asks some good questions. She says, do you have a favorite fabric line? Um, in terms of, it's a little bit tricky to answer. So I definitely have dyers that I really like, um, that I use fairly regularly. Um, I like Under the Sea. I like Fortnite Fabrics. Um, I like Ship's Manor a lot. Um, I enjoy what I've used of Color and Cotton. Um, I think X Jude and Be Stitch Me both have some very lovely colors. I think Fiberlicious has some great colors. I just don't tend to go for them. One of the main reasons is because I've been in Fabric of the Months. Um, I usually have enough colors built up that I don't need to go looking for unless it's something specific. And usually I don't want to wait. So I'm more likely to use something I have. Um, or find something that's like a Zweigert or a Wichelt that's a little easier and quicker to source if I want something very specific. But usually I don't go into anything with a fabric in mind. Um, and if I can't find a piece of fabric that I think is going to work for the project, then a lot of the times I'll just work on something, pick something else because I don't, I don't want to match a fabric wrong, if that makes sense. I do find that I am drawn more towards blues and browns and sometimes grays more than anything. I do green somewhat regularly. I don't do the purple or the yellow, uh, yellow some. I don't do a lot of purple. I don't do a lot of um, red. Um, and I think it's because I don't always pick projects that are gonna work on those. They're very, very specific sort of colors, but I do like those fabrics a lot, so I have pretty decent stash of them. Um, the, uh, 
So I, I those are those are kind of my go tos. Tend to be browns and blues, um, but I'm working really hard to start branching myself out more into other colors. Um, And trying not to buy fabric unless I absolutely have to. But every once in a while, especially when Fortnite does like an auction or a quick sale, yeah, I'm, I'm a real sucker. Um, Sandra Hayes has a couple of good questions. Uh, she first asks, um, what did I stitch my Oz ornaments on? Which are the ones back here. These are actually on perforated paper. Um, so, they're on perforated paper. Um, they work real well. Um, the only one that had to have any sort of, like, real super tweak was, um, Munchkin, the Munchkin Mare. Um, the backstitching on Munchkin, um, I had to get a little creative to make the French knot work. Um, I think there was another little bit of it. Like, I had to do some minor tweaking simply because it... I didn't have the ability to split the thread because <laughs> it's for free to paper. Um, she also says that she is thinking of maybe dyeing the fabric on those Disney Kincaid, fa the Thomas Kincaid Disney charts to try to mimic the backgrounds so that she can just stitch the details. I honestly don't think I would recommend that simply because I don't think trying to remove the background from those would work terribly well. I think you would end up, I think it would end up being more muddy than you want. Um, but that's just me. Um, and then the lovely Michelle Bindi asks, um, do I keep the tool caddy next to my stitching spot or do I move it around? And it's, um, it stays in my next to my stitching spot um, so that I can easily get to what I need. So, um, and I don't use the little the, the detachable cup thing. It's actually designed for your um, for your orts. I don't use it for that. I use a bigger container for orts. So, all right. So that is the Q&A. Um, all right, so let me talk about my little bit of haul. Um, I don't remember who it was that suggested it. It was someone in Virtual Stitchers, but they mentioned that Coloring Cotton does, um, I think they're called shortcuts, and they're 10 by 34 inch pieces. So I have that, that Holy Moses piece which on an 18 count 10 by 34 is perfect. So it's, uh, and I got it in the colorway winter wheat because I just needed something sort of, sort of neutrally. And then it came with a skein of, uh, Indigo, dark indigo, which is very beautiful. I really like the color and cotton fibers. I haven't gotten to use them too often. Um, I'm hopeful that, uh, I believe my LNS is planning to start carrying it. So I'm hoping we'll have a little bit easier access to it soon. Um, largely because I am impatient when it comes to work and things. I have a whole instant grab. So that was my haul for the week. All right, so let's discuss what did Garrett work on this week? And this will get a little bit of the June goals going. 
So I did finish part two of Under the Sea, and I'm working on part three. I should have that finished up this afternoon because I don't have a lot left. So, um, let's see. I might get my notes up on this. Okay, so I named um, the mermaid Nixie, or Nix. Um, This is on um, Still Waters from uh, Fortnite Fab, or not Fortnite Fab, excuse me. So here's part one, two, and most of part three. So we've got Nixie the mermaid, um, Roxanne and Flipper the dolphins, and then in part two it added in um, Shirley the scuba diver, who I named after the first registered or who's believed to be the first registered um, black female sports diver. We have an Eagle Ray, who I named Bulger. Get Ray Bulger. Um, the little silver moony fish I named um, Luna, because why not? And then the three angel fish are Farah, Kate, and Jacqueline for the original Charlie's Angels. I'm very proud of myself for these. Um, so I'm down here working. I did accidentally make uh, Bulger, he's one stitch over, um, I miscounted over in here, so he's gonna be coming right up against these, but it was just easier that way. I used an orophil for the, the coral, it's a little hard to tell, but, pic and picture, but it gives it a nice bumpy, corally texture. Um, and now I'm working on, I've just gotta finish in, basically, the, there's some anemones here that are, like, tubular anemones, I've got this little one here, too and then some seaweed. So, should definitely have that finished this afternoon. I don't don't anticipate it's gonna take me all that long. Um, and then my goal next month is just gonna be to, I'll be caught up by the end of this month on it. So, which is my goal. Um, and then I should have, should be able next month to finish out the next part on time. Um, I worked on Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice, actually, my one of my whip goes was uh, for my friend Jess, Jessica to pick. So she picked Pride and Prejudice. So didn't get a whole lot done on it this month. Um, I did sort of round, get down to the bottom corner of the border here. So um, the whip go, it was to be 500 on a project. So I will finish, she picks this one, so I will finish the border is the plan on that. My other whip go was finish three cell parts. So we'll see how achievable that is considering um, I don't currently, well, I, this is the only real sow. This one and under this year are the only real sows that I've got actively. So that could be interesting. Um, and then I worked on Wicked Siblings. This is on a one-off from Fortnite Fabrics. So I did the, the tree here and those little flowers so my goal this next month is going to be to finish out the tree or finish out all the leaves um and then probably just get started on the stars up above it i didn't quite get all my goals this month and that's okay um the trying to catch up on under the sea was what what kind of helped me up um because it got a little more attention but I don't really know because I didn't follow my planner like I should have. Um, I kind of kind of failed on the plannering in May, um, which I don't did not like. And then I read recently somewhere where humans having goals and things like that, where we can chart progress, a lot of the times makes us more efficient. Um, so I need to get back to doing that because I do feel like I was more efficient when I was doing it. 
I was just lazy this month. Okay, so let's talk about, um, I'll show new moon, new start, and then we'll do the rest of the goals. So this one's new moon, new start. Um, this time I did sort of manipulate the wheel a little bit. I wanted to, um, since I have one project that I'll talk about here in a few moments, starting, I didn't want to go through the whole process of, I didn't want to deal with kidding anything. I just wanted something that was ready to go, just bing, bang, boom. So I took, I spun the wheel and only took ones that were my actual, like, literal kits. So I'm actually going to be starting this Elsa Williams castle. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I am home tomorrow because it is a federal holiday, so I hopefully will make some pretty decent progress in it. Um, so, all right. Let's talk, and we're not going in any particular order, but let's talk June goals. June is busting out all over. Um, okay, so um, we've got Snow White from Brooks Books, and I did change its um, minder, which will make sense here in a few moments. So this is on Ale from Picture This Plus. Here's where I stopped on it last month or here in May. So my goal is to do half of a page, um, which I should have this prepped and ready. I do apologize about it. Come on, iPad. Be the iPad I need you to be. Okay, so for Snow White, I'm going to try and zoom this so that it kind of gives you the... Okay, this isn't exactly perfect, but that's essentially the quor quarter of the first page. Or that's the first page. So my goal is going to be to do half of that page. Um, but that also depends on how quick it stitches. If it stitches quick enough, I may go ahead and just hit a full page. We'll sort of see. I'm a little willing to be flexible on that because I'm just not entirely sure how much is going to be involved. Um, but there's the, for those that don't remember, there's the full design. So, okay. So that's Snow White, Blanche as it were. All right. Um, Summer Patrick has been moved into a new um, home just for its final month. The goal on it is a finish. Um, getting the magazine in and out is not going to be quite so super easy, so I do apologize. I'm not going to show you the full picture for it, but here's where I am on it. I've just got these three sections here. There's a um, pair of scissors and a needle and some thread and a spool of thread here. There's a small wreath and then there's a small trio of flowers. So this one's going to move real. I think this one's going to be a real quick finish. Um... Part of me kind of wants to work on that today instead of under the sea. Which, okay, let's think about this. So if I finish part three next month, that would count as part of my Ripco goal. That would be a smarter decision. So we're going to work on Summer Patrick and aim for a finish. Let's see what happens, y'all. It would be really nice if I did get another finish in this month. Okay. Um, we'll talk about this one in a second. Let's let you there. Okay. We've got Haunted House. This is by, by Bent Creek. It's on a one-off from Fortnite Fabrics. So here's where I'm at on it. The last part 
is not going to take all that long. I was looking at it last night, and it's just, it, it's not a ton of stitching. So it's just the ghosts and a trunk and a mouse and a picture. And then I just have to put on its little beads and buttons. So my goal for it is definitely a finish for next month. All right, now we've got our September Hige. Which I know, I know. Wait a minute, Garrett, we're in. Okay, I'm on. So I find it. Er, I'm out of step with them. So here is um, what it looks like. Um, it's not as backstitch heavy as the last one was, I don't think. So that'll be nice. Um, Yeah, it's only a couple of colors, and it's not, not too terrible this time. So for those who don't recall what the rest of them look like, I just want to see. Here is the full. Here's the first heat. We've got four left, so June, July, August, September. All right. What's in this bag? Ah, Stitch and Witches. Okay, so this is one I did not get to this month. Although if, um, depending on how I finish Summer Patrick now, I'll probably just go back to Under the Sea on Tuesday. Um, we'll see. But there's, there's where I am still on it, and the plan is to do the ABC row and then the three before the next big vignette scene. Um, all right, so up from the vaults came, or from the archives, came Heart and Hand's Wonderful World, or Wonderful Life, or as I was calling it, How Wonderful Life Is, Now You're in the World. And my goal is going to be to finish out this left-hand side over here. Because um, it shouldn't, it should be relatively achievable. Let's see, here's, the water is the big part. The rest of it is all fairly quick, easy stitching. And I've already got the bunny done, so I've got to do the bird, the fox, the flowers, two mushrooms, and the raccoon. I'm saving the words for the end. So, and then just that little bit of water. And that's my longest row of water, so. Definitely think it's doable. Um. And then my plan, because this is a birth sampler, um, is instead of putting, because I've got two of the bead packs, so I'm going to take out the heart one there, and I'm probably going to use some other bead here for that to sort of fill in that spot, since this won't, since I, we likely won't have children. I didn't realize it was birth sampler, I just thought it was cute. I like the song. So. Alright. Then, last but not least, with the current whips, we've got Oz Tree. So my goal is to work finish this monkey branch area in here. Here's where I'm at on the whips. Let's 
So, and there are still some back stitching and things that need doing, but I've got, I've got some plans for some texturing things. So I'm going to try and wait and do all that at the end. All right. Now for the bigger thing. So as many people know, June is Pride Month. Uh, and Jacob from Modern Folk, Folk Embroidery has created a new pattern this year. Um, it's called Move Forward in Love. And I think versus trying to explain, I'm just going to read off to you what he wrote about it. Um, I wanted to do an LGBTQ plus inspired pattern for some time, but I didn't quite know where to start. With current anti-LGBTQ plus laws being passed in the U.S. educational system, and then the U.S. in general, my own side, I felt that I really wanted to do something myself. After watching Imogen X Stitch's first Floss 2 episode, again, highly recommend if you haven't seen it, I was inspired by some words they said right at the end of that video. They showed a tarot card called The Lovers, and quoted Madam Adam's words, move forward in love or backward in fear. As the progress pride flag has triangles on the left pointing to the right, the moving forward in love seemed like such an appropriate quote to display in this design. So here is the design. 50% of the proceeds from this are going to be going to a U.S.-based LGBTQ charity. I think the plan right now is the Trevor Project, was what he said last. Um, but here's the pattern. Um, it's available in two different versions, both the full color and the monochrome, which I don't have a picture of. The big difference is, obviously the monochrome is single color, so the, the center medallion isn't filled in with the flag and move forward in love is charted a little differently because we all know how well Garrett loves uh, loves full coverage like that. I'm going to actually use the center medallion from the um, from the the monochrome with the rest of it in the the multi. Um, I do plan to bring in some metallics in a couple of places. There's going to be some fun blinginess to it. Um, the fabric I've chosen, let's see, so first this is why Summer Patchwork's not in it, the bag it was in, because I thought drag chickens needed to be what I used for, for this one. So I'm going to be using, um, Bridget in an opal, it's a 16 count opalescent Ada, it's from Under the Sea Fabrics. Super sparkly on here, super sparkly in real life, um, which is why I probably won't do a whole lot of metallic. And then I'm probably going to use, I'm going to use this particular side so it's a little more purpley because he loves me purple. And I did look through to see if I had anything slightly, for lack of a better word, gayer, and I didn't, so. Um, and then for floss, I'm going to be using, um, for the most part, um, Aurifil. So here are, I'll show you the colors sort of in. These are not in rainbow color order, and for that I'm sorry. I may change my yellow up too, it's going to depend a little on how it stitches. But here's those four. And these six. So like I said, the yellow may have to be changed to something brighter. Um, we'll sort of see as we stitch. I just have to pick that up off the board now. All right. So uh, props are obviously always mad love to Jacob. Um, I don't stitch a lot of his designs. I need to stitch more because I like a lot of his designs. Um, but he's also just a kick-ass human being. So, and again, if you haven't watched it, Imogen X stitches, she's got two now. Um... Uh, they're just pretty fantastic in general, and I adore them. So, anyhow, that is it for me today. Um, I hope everyone has a terrific week. If you're in America and you're off for Memorial Day, enjoy the day off tomorrow. Um, if you're in the military, um, you know, the, this is not the day to observe those who are actively in the military. It's the day to remember those who are who have fallen. Um, if that has affected you and yours, then of course my sympathies. So anyhow, 
Um, I, that's it for me today. I hope everyone has a wonderful week and I will see you all 